Hey, this is Joe from Ride or Die Gun Training. Just wanted to talk about situational awareness really quick. Uh, it is the most important tool that you have defensively. A lot of people, you know, like to focus on uh, guns and gear, different things, but a lot of us overlook the importance of situational awareness. So I'm going to tell you about a personal experience in my life when I lacked situational awareness and how it almost got me killed and, you know, things that I learned from it. So back in 2004, this is when Ohio first passed the law for concealed carry. I didn't have a concealed carry at this time. So I'm out hanging with a friend, you know, playing PlayStation over his house, video games or whatnot. <clears throat> I'm young, dumb, and like I said, at this point, zero situational awareness on this particular night. So I leave my friend's house on uh, McMicken Avenue right down the street from Uni uh, University of Cincinnati, walking down the street towards my car to get my car and head home. And, you know, I see a guy walking up the street <clears throat> about my height, my age, kind of looks like me almost. <laughs> so I see a guy walking up the street. You know, I don't pay him any mind. He's not sus. He's not bothering me. You know, he just happened to be wearing all black. But like I said, I'm not profiling or anything. He's not bothering me. So as I walk towards my car, I notice that the guy is kind of walking towards my car as well. And I'm looking like, you know, there's a bus stop right by my car. So my assumption is he's waiting on the bus. And me being young and dumb, like I said, and not have a situational awareness this night. Guy walks over, so he's at the bus stop, like right by my car, and then I have to walk past him to get to my car, and I'm unarmed at this time. So when I walk past, I totally like let my guard down, and guy asked me what time is it, and you know I'm thinking, you know, okay, that's a legit question. The guy's, you know, right by the bus stop. He asked what time it is. He wants to know what time the bus is coming. So literally, when I look down at my watch. I didn't even see the gun come out, you know, all I did was I looked down at my watch and I felt pressing feeling up against my neck. And then, you know, my natural reflex was, you know, get this dude's hand up the hell off my neck. So I grabbed his hand and then moved his hand off my neck. And that's when I noticed the small caliber gun that he had in his hand. So at this time, it's just natural reflex. I'm wrestling for the gun trying to get it out of his hand, but the guy had a firm grip on the gun. And at the time, you know, I'm young. This is before any, uh, you know, dealing with tactical gun disarms or whatever. So I didn't know how to disarm someone. So I couldn't get the gun out of his hand because, like I said, he had a very firm grip on it. And then meanwhile, while I'm wrestling for the gun, he's trying to shoot me in the face. So I can hear the the sound of the him pulling the trigger, but the, the trigger's dead. And I'll get to that in a minute of why. So he's pulling the trigger while we're wrestling for the gun. And he's trying to shoot me in the face. And it took me maybe, you know, five, six seconds wrestling him for the gun to realize what was even happening. Like I said, I was just natural reflex at this point. So, you know, five, six seconds later, I realized, you know, I'm not getting a gun out of his hand. And, you know, oh, crap, this dude's trying to shoot me in the face. So I stopped wrestling him for the gun. And, uh, you know, guy asked me for my money. I laid it down, you know, didn't resist or anything at that point. I gave him my money and then he runs down the street backwards with the gun still pointing at me, telling him, don't follow me, don't follow me. And then, you know, he runs to some uh, bushes. I guess he knows the trail because he's probably from out in that neighborhood, uh, out by Coryville, and if you know Cincinnati. So he runs into the bushes and then disappears after that. And, you know, I go uh, foul police report or whatever, but they never find the guy because I don't have a description. He's my height, my weight, uh, uh, my weight, my age you know, kind of favors me. So yeah, they never found the guy. So lack of situational awareness on that night almost got me killed. The guy caught me slipping or sleeping. Lack of situational awareness. So hypothetically, even if I was carrying that night, my gun would have done me no good because I lacked situational awareness. I did not see the threat before the threat attacked which is too late in most scenarios. You have to see the threat before they attack. So 
situational awareness is important. Like I said, being aware of your surroundings, being aware of, you know, what's happening in the environment around you, definitely being aware of what people are doing around you, especially watching like hand movements. And then I'll tell you hindsight, you know, now that I've been formally trained and, you know, many years later, things that I didn't notice that I should have noticed, but I didn't have situational awareness. So let me rewind. So the guy, when I saw him across the street, he had his hand in his sleeve. So let me go ahead and clear this gun before I start doing anything with it. I'm going to take the mag out and clear the chamber. So my little MMP shield is clear, chamber's clear, no mag in the gun. So the guy, when he was across the street, and he had a much smaller gun than this, it was a little hard for me to demonstrate, but he had his gun in his sleeve just like this. So when he's across the street, this is literally how he is with his jacket and his hoodie on. This is how the gun was. So when he starts crossing the street, at that time, like I said, me being young dumb, I saw him go like this motion right here. And I assume that he was, you know, scratching his wrist or something like that. But hindsight, I realize now that what the guy was doing was when he was coming across the street, he was slowly racking the slide. And he did it real slow so that I couldn't hear it and so that I wouldn't notice it. And, and then the rest is history after that, you know, me getting robbed and almost getting shot in the face. And another thing is... When he did that, when he racked the slide inside of his jacket real slow, he rolled the slide home. And at the same time, like I said, it's in the sleeve of his jacket so that I couldn't see it when he crept up on me. I don't know if it was me wrestling him for the gun that pushed the gun out of battery or was it him, you know, riding the slide home and having the gun inside his sleeve that caused the gun to be out of battery. But basically he couldn't shoot me because the gun was out of battery. You know, there is a God. So thank God that that is a miracle right there. So yeah, the gun was out of battery when he aimed it at my face and my neck and tried to pull the trigger. So literally just this right here, that's it. Dead trigger, gun out of battery, won't fire. So that's what he tried to shoot me with out of battery gun. But that was, I mean, I've had other bad situations happen in other robbery attempts and a a lot of other bad stuff, but that was the closest I've ever come to being shot in the face. I've had people shoot at me before, but from a distance, this was the closest that I've ever had a gun on me and someone actually pulled the trigger. And, you know, I'm a faithful man. There's definitely a God because a lot of people don't survive having a gun pointed at them at point blank range and then have someone pull the trigger like 10 times on you and not get killed. So, you know, thank God. But back to it, situational awareness. Pay attention. You know, I see a lot of people walking around. They're on cell phones. You know, cell phone is glued right here. They're looking at their cell phone and they're oblivious to their surroundings. They have no idea what's happening around them, what people are doing, not paying attention. Just like I was when I was, like I said, young and dumb, especially on that particular night. So. Not paying attention can get you killed. Like I said, you won't even see the attack coming if you don't have situational awareness. You'll be too glued to your iPhone or your Android or whatever, or, you know, just listening to your music and you don't hear the footsteps coming from behind you. You know, you got four guys running up from behind you, but you got your beats so loud in your ear that you don't even hear those footsteps. And once you're being attacked, it's hard to recover from that. When you're in the middle of, you know, they got the drop on you. So the goal of situational awareness is if you're aware, ideally, it will be very hard for anyone to get the drop on you. That's the goal of situational awareness. To be prepared. Some people call it paranoid. I call it preparation. So be prepared and aware to the extent where no one can get the drop on you. That's the goal of situational awareness. You're so observant. To what is going on around you, what people are going, what people are doing around you, that no one can get the drop on you. You know, you see the guy 
coming across with the, you know, with the weird movement here, his hands here, or you see the dude that's, you know, here, and you, situational awareness, you know, now with situational awareness, I see this a mile away, I can't see his right hand, you know, he's sketchy, he's looking around a lot, weird body movement, yellow flag, situational awareness, without situational awareness, like I said, you'll never see it, you know, a guy could prepare, you know, he could, Literally do this. You got your headphones on, take his knife out, you know, walk up behind you from across the street and then stab you to death because you're not paying any attention. Situational awareness, you know, that that's that spidey sense where, you know, the guy, you feel their presence behind you and you just happen to look back while they're still 15 yards away from you and that gives you a chance to react or to see the guy coming across the street that looks sketchy that, you know, just happens to put his hands in his pockets not that he's doing anything wrong, but that just lets me know, yellow flag, watch this person. You know, they might be going in there pulling out paper or something like that. But yellow flag tells me to watch because I don't know if it's, you know, pieces of paper. Or they're looking for something in their pocket or he put his hands in his pocket to go for this right here. You know, he's about to up me and, you know, tell me to lay it down or rob me or whatever or just assault me. So situational awareness, situational awareness, situational awareness. Always, always, always be aware of your surroundings. And I don't give a damn where you are. If you're on vacation, at a wedding, at school, there is no such thing as a safe place. Get that through your mind right now. There is no such thing as a safe place. I don't care what zip code you live in, how nice your neighborhood is, what your income is what your ethnicity is, what your religion is, there is no safe place. You could be at church, school, you know, at home. Pay attention, always.